Alrighty, hello and welcome back to module one. So this is going to be all about variables and data types in Python. Uh, so unlike the last uh, couple of videos, I'm actually not going to go verbatim through everything in here. Uh, I'm just going to be talking and I'm going to be mostly coding just inside of my, uh, my text editor here. Um, if you do want to actually read along at the same time, then you can go ahead and pop open the links that I'll have in the description below to this module, either on GitHub or on my website, and then you can read the stuff at the same time, or you can watch this video and then read the stuff afterwards or pop back and forth as you need to, whatever. Okay, so let's get into it. So what actually is a variable? Um, and so when the purpose of a variable basically is that often when you're writing code, you're going to need to take data and you're going to need to change it and manipulate it. And also you might need to use it a couple of different times in a couple of different places. And so basically being able to give data a name is super helpful. Um, so just for example, let's say we wanted to uh, represent our age. Um, we could just say age is equal to 21. And then now we know that uh, this can actually be reused. We can actually just use the word age later on. For example, the type print age. Um, we can actually use this later on to represent our age throughout the program. Um, so now if I go ahead and run this, you'll see we get 21 back right away. So this is super important because we can uh, we can basically store a whole ton of information and easily be able to pull it back up as we need to uh, as we go through a whole bunch of different things. Um, so now with this, uh, as you saw pretty simply there, I can just easily set up, basically I just type whatever the variable name that I want on the left-hand side here. Uh, there's then going to be an equal sign, which basically is what's called uh, an assignment operator because we are assigning the value of 21 to the name age. Uh, and so we can actually go through, and if we ever need to update this, for example, let's say we turn 22, then we can say age is equal to 22. And now if we print our age out, um, you'll see that before it was 21 and then it's 22 afterwards. So we can actually go through and update these as we need to. Um, and we can also have, within a program, we can have multiple variables. So I can say, for example, let's say name, and instead now let's put some quotes and then I'll just put here, wood. And so now when I go through, I now have an age and a name, and I can go ahead and print them both, as you saw there. So this is super helpful. Um, We'll see later on, there's a bunch of other stuff that you can do with variables that's really fancy uh, and really helpful for just really cutting down the complexity of things. Again, if we just had a whole bunch of numbers all over the place in our program or just a whole bunch of text just kind of everywhere, it'd be really hard to read. Um, so this really helps with a lot of organization stuff. One thing to keep in mind is that it's really important to make sure you pick good variable names. Uh, again, there's there's a whole load, if you go through the course notes, I've given some example of variable name guidelines and ways to make your variable names better. Um, it's really important to get this down because if you're working on larger projects and for example, instead of name, you put, I don't know, um, like N, and you say like N is equal to Kieran Wood, for example, then somebody who might be reading the code when you're a couple hundred lines deep might not necessarily know what n actually is and so it becomes super hard to read if you just keep if you don't actually give descriptive names for your variables uh, so i've included some information on the reading that will help you to pick a little bit better variables and some strategies to pick better variable names um okay so data types so as you've actually already seen, there's a couple of different ways that we can represent data in Python. So up here we have a number. Uh, so this is actually specifically called an int or an integer. So this is any positive or negative numbers that we want to represent up here. Um, there's other types of data, like for example, this is called a string. And so basically it's, it's a string of characters. And so that's represented by some text encapsulated in either double or single quotes. You can use either. So unlike Java, you can actually use either of these to represent it. There's no such thing as a char in Python, so you can use either to represent the data. Um, there's a couple of other different data types, and so we'll just go through them one by one here. Um, so we'll first go through what's called the primitive data types. So these are kind of the, uh, the simplest data types that you have in Python. So we've already seen one, so this is the age here. Um, you can add a whole bunch of numbers to this, like this, this can go up pretty high, um, specifically 
Python has what's called, if, you, if you're coming from a more uh, strict programming background, Python has what's called dynamic um, dynamic bit integers, which means that they will change based on what's necessary up to the limits of the RAM in the machine, and so er, up to the limits of the uh, um, up to basically just up to the limits of the machine, and so for anybody who's just new to programming, basically what that means is that you can effectively add as many numbers as you want to. If you're getting into more complicated calculations, you may need to look into some other ways of doing this, but for the most part, basically you can just add as many decimal places as you want, pretty much, in this case. <clears throat> um, integers also do include negative numbers, so you can do negative uh, numbers and you can do huge negative numbers as well if you need to. Um, both are an option. Next we have floating point numbers, and so floating point numbers are basically uh, just any numbers that have a decimal, so you can have a dot and then any sort of numbers after that. Uh, these can be both negative and positive, just like integers. Um, and yeah, and then the next uh, data type that we have there is uh, strings. And so strings, you've already seen a whole bunch of these. Uh, this down here is actually a string, so you can use uh, just some text encapsulated by single or double quotes. Uh, you can use either. Uh, Python has no concept of the char type, so you don't have to worry about that um, if you're coming from a Java background. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, and something that catches people off guard a whole bunch with strings, is that uh, if you do decide to, if you need some, if you need some form of quotes inside the string itself, make sure that it's different than the quotes that you're using to close the string. So, i.e., if you're trying to quote somebody in a string, make sure to use the the single quotes if you're being encapsulated by double quotes by saying like this is quoted text. Um, because if you use the same double quotes, what you'll see here when I do this is that there's now an error, and this actually won't run because it sees it goes from here. Python will go from here to here. And then this is just kind of hanging out and doesn't know what to do with this. So make sure that you use mismatched quotes when you're trying to actually put a quote in inside your string. Um, and you can also, by the way, this you can have a whole bunch of uh, like it's any characters basically. So you can have regular text like you just saw there with letters. You can also have numbers. You can have dashes. You can have slashes, and you can have a whole bunch of stuff inside of strings. Uh, and the next. Um, data type that there is is what's called booleans and so booleans basically uh, there's two different options there's true and false for booleans and so for booleans what you can have is uh, let's say for example that you're trying to go through and you're trying to do um, I don't know let's say that you wanted to have somebody check if they're the legal age so I'm 21 and a bunch of decimal places so that means that I'm legal drinking age so that means that I can do legal age we can say is equal to capital T R U E. Um, any booleans are always going to be capitalized. So if you have true, then that's there. Uh, and then let's say now instead this was 16, then we could say that this is false. And it just works exactly as you'd imagine. Um, these actually under the hood, just a little bit of background information, these can also be represented by zeros and ones. So zero is considered false and any number other than zero is considered true as well. Uh, that'll matter, matter, that will matter more when we get into the module about operators and uh, log logical operators. So now that we've covered all the leftover primitive data types, let's get into the more fun ones. Uh, so these are what's called uh, collections. And so the base, the basic idea behind a collection is that it is a collection of a whole bunch of primitive data types. So it would be a bunch of ints or a bunch of strings all kind of combined together. And so the basic one in Python is what's called a list. And so let's say, for example, we had a whole bunch of ages that we wanted to keep track of, of users on our platform. Uh, we could have something like a list called ages. And so it's just the two square brackets here. And then each of the values we want to put in, and it's all just comma delineated also. So we can have like, for example, 21, 15, and 19 here. And then we can go ahead and print out our ages really quickly. And we'll just run that. And so now you can see we have 21, 15, and 19. And uh, so let's say, for example, you also wanted to access just an individual, uh, what's called an individual element inside the list. So let's say, for example, you just wanted to pick this first one here. You can actually just do that in what's called uh, index format. And so it looks something like uh, something like this. Uh, these little square brackets here and then zero. And so I'll show you what that looks like in the print. You can see now it just printed out the very first one. 
Uh, now, as you saw, that probably looked a little bit weird because you're like zero. Hold on. Don't things start at one? No. In, in programming, pretty much when you have anything to do with lists, they're always going to start with zeros. Uh, and so basically it's what's called your index value. And so in this case, we have the what's called the zeroth element of the list here. We then have the first element of the list here and the second element of the list here. And those that's based on what index they're at. So if I wanted to get, for example, the second number here, then I would type one, and that would be what's called the firstth element, which is actually the second second thing in the list. So that's something that's a little bit weird with lists. That's common across a lot of languages and a lot of different data types. Um, it's It makes sense when you get more into the computer science background of it, but it's not it's not that important to get hung up on. Um, I'll actually just show you here. I have a little, uh, sorry, this is the wrong browser tab. Here we go. Uh, I have a little diagram that explains this a little bit. So you can see here we have four, nine, two, seven. Uh, the index zero is for the four, the one is for the nine, the two is for the two, and the three is for the seven. Uh, and there's lots of good information inside here that tells you how to access all this information yourself. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, that's a uh, that's a list. There's also another data type called a uh, a tuple, and so tuples are essentially the same idea as a list. Um, they're what's called an, an immutable list, um, and so basically the biggest difference that you have with these between the list and the tuple is that the tuple basically says none of the values inside of it can be changed. So like, for example, I can read the value here, but if I change this back to a list, like this, for example, and then let's say um, the, pers the first person is now 22, I can actually go through here and you'll see when I print this out now, this value is actually 22. So I can actually change this number inside the list um, by just reassigning it using this index, uh, this index lookup here. So it's super easy for me to be able to just change values as needed. Whereas if I did this with a tuple, what you'll find is we'll get an error. It says type error, tuple object does not support item assignment. And so basically, if you have things that are never going to change, it's a good idea to use a tuple. Um, the biggest reason is that it actually tuples save a little bit of space in the back end. Um, they're a little bit a little bit faster than lists in certain certain ways, uh, but also that if you have information that isn't going to change. Um, so like, for example, people's date of births might be a good one to put into a tuple list versus someone's age, which is going to change every year. You don't want to put it in a tuple list, uh, into a tuple, sorry. You'd wanna you'd wanna use a list for that. So uh, you can actually you can also mix and match data types. So if I really wanted to, then I could have like here and in here, and I could print um, sorry, I could print that. Uh, there we go, and you'll see it prints Kieran. Um, this is useful sometimes. It's it, it basically just means that you can have any sort of content, any any sort of data type that you want inside these lists. Um, the same thing with tuples, you can have mixed data types. You don't have to have one specific data type, uh, which will be quite different if you're coming from Java, Go, or any of those other languages that use arrays as opposed to lists. So there we go. The last one, um, which is maybe a little bit more complicated, uh, is what's called a dictionary. Um, and so I'll just touch on this briefly, but there is a good, again, on here, there's a good explanation of what this means. And so basically what you can do with this is you can set up, uh, let's say for example, we'll say user. And what you do is you do these little curly brackets and this creates a dictionary. Uh, and as long as you have these curly brackets, by the way, you can have multiple lines. Same thing with lists. Like if I had those ages before, I can actually spread these out over multiple lines. So I can put like 21, 15, and 19 if I really wanted to. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Basically, the biggest thing that actually matters for this is that they are encapsulated by these brackets. So a dictionary, basically what it allows you to do is it allows you to, instead of using that index thing that I showed you before, maybe you want to store a whole bunch of different data in, in something. Like, for example, uh, you want to store a user's data. 
Uh, and so there's going to be a whole bunch of different things like their name, their age, their birthday, their, their net worth, something like that. Um, then you can actually store it with what are called key value pairs. And so the idea with this is, let's say I say name here, and then I put Kieran, and then I put age 21, and then I put, uh, I don't know, um, do legal age represents legal drinking age. Right. Uh, so again, when you're adding comments, it's sometimes a good idea, even though I know I'm going to throw away this code later on, it's a good idea to get in the habit of commenting things that might be ambiguous. Legal age could mean a whole bunch of different things. Um, it depends, it, like it's open to interpretation. So that's why I added this little comment on the side here that just says represents the legal drinking age. Um, but now what I can do is instead of having before where we have to do print user of zero and then we have no idea what that really means, we can actually type print user name. And so now when I run this, you'll see it prints the name and that's perfect because when I'm reading this now, I know exactly what I'm trying to print. Uh, now let's say I want to print the age. Now I have the name and I have the age right there. Super useful. Uh, same thing can be done with legal age. Right. And so now I have a whole bunch of data that I can store about somebody. And I can store it in a way that when I'm trying to, let's say, for example, that there's, you know, a hundred lines of code between here and here instead of having just some random thing that just says print user zero, for example, and I have to try and look at this and go, what, what's happening? Now I can just have print username, and now I know, now even without comments, I know exactly what's going on. And now it's never a bad idea to just say like, prints user's name, but you don't actually necessarily have to if you're using a dictionary because you can see that you know exactly what you're printing because you've labeled it before you've before you've gone ahead and made it. Um, so dictionaries can be also really powerful. Um, definitely recommend looking into those. There'll be some challenges and exercises about them um, later on as well. Uh, so we're not going to worry too much. I did mention something about mutability inside the uh, the document. Don't stress too much about this if you don't understand it. It's more for people who have already done some programming before. This will actually make a little bit of a difference for them. Um, but if this is your first time, come back and read this after you finish the course and maybe it'll make a little bit more sense. Um, but I've included this in here for people who are more familiar with programming, um, just so that they're, they're aware of some of the details. Uh, next we have, and well, last but not least, we have uh, typecasting. And so typecasting, Basically, like I said, there's there's all these different types that you have in Python, like for example, a string, an int, or whatever. Um, but let's say somebody accidentally has, uh, they, they've made their, they've entered the age as a string. This might not seem like a big deal, but let's say you want, somebody has a birthday and you wanna add one to that. Um, well now you can't, cause it's, it's a string. Like add, what does it mean to add one to a string, it doesn't really it doesn't really make any sense. So instead, what we can do, um, and I can actually show you what this will do. So if I so if I do age plus two, for example, when I try and run this, it's going to throw an error and it's going to get going to yell at me. And it's going to say, can only concatenate string not into string, which basically, as far as you're concerned, you just see the big thing that says type error and you know that you've done something wrong. <clears throat> um, and it also tells you which line you've done it wrong on. So that's line four. So we know, oh, okay, I've made a mistake here. So how do we actually switch this around? Um, there's a couple different ways to do it, but in this case, because we want to change to an int, we can actually just literally type int as a function and then give age as the data that we want to change. And so now what we can actually do is we can print all of this. So we're now we're chaining a couple of things together here. Um, and what we get is 23, because what we've done is we've said, okay, 21 is here. So Python looks at the that the deepest level of brackets, which in this case is age. And it says, okay, we've got the string 21. Let's step outside one bracket. And then we see, oh, okay, it's being changed to an int. 
So now instead of being 21 the string, we now have 21 the integer, which is the same as just saying this without the quotes, basically. And then now that we've done that, we're going to add 2 to it and print it. So now we have 21, which is what this is turned into as an int, plus 2, which is 23, and then we're printing it. Okay, perfect. Hopefully everybody's with me so far. Um, what we're going to do now is we'll step on to the exercises, and uh, hopefully if you have any questions, they'll hopefully be answered in the exercises. But be sure, if you haven't yet, go to the website or to the GitHub link and go ahead and read the module because there'll be more detail in there, and if you're confused on anything, hopefully it'll be clarified inside there. Uh, so now I'll go ahead, jump back onto here, and we'll just copy the exercises really quickly. And I'll just put them into this file. Okay. So let's start with exercise one. Using a list, create a shopping list of five items, then print the whole list and add each item individually. Okay, perfect. So we should... Um, create a list and fill it with some values. So let's just say eggs. Uh, I'm going to use that weird notation I showed you before. So I'm going to do eggs ha ham. And we'll do sausage, bacon, Ravioli. Yeah, ravioli. There we go. Uh, I'm actually going to do this and just move this down one because this looks kind of weird. Again, like I said, the spacing doesn't really matter for these as long as you have one bracket opening and one bracket closing, so it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, so let's take a look at what we have now. So now when we go ahead and run this, we have eggs, ham, sausage, bacon, and ravioli all inside the list. Uh, and so now it says we need to figure out how to print the individual values. So if we go back, we know, so this is a list, so we know we can scroll up and we can see, ah, here we go. So this has the information about how to access different values. And so what we can do is we can just say print shopping list of zero. And so that will print the first value and we can check if that's actually true by just running it again and yep yeah, we got the first value here so now we can just go ahead and do that a couple oh, oh, sorry we can do that a couple more times so we can do one two th three four and now each of them prints out uh, so now you might be wondering well what happens if we go too far what if we do five for example um, so Python will just, it'll throw an error, it'll tell you that the index is out of range because you've gone too far past um, the index that you need. So because there's only four, because there's only five items, you remember it starts from zero, and there's one, two, three, and whoops, four items. So when we go to five, we're trying to say find the sixth item in the list, and since it doesn't exist, it throws an error. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove that. And there we go. Okay, so that was the that was the first exercise done. Perfect. Uh, now I'm gonna comment these out because I don't want everything printing all the time. So uh, if you're in Visual Studio Code or in a lot of other um, editors, you can actually just highlight the lines you want to comment, and then press Control and um, backslash the one with the question mark right beside shift so you can just do that and you'll see it'll automatically comment these lines out for us so i don't have to worry about them okay uh let's take a look at exercise two so when you're ready to work on these exercises uncomment the code below okay so i'll just go ahead and uncomment that code and it says find something that you can eat that has nutritional facts and a label fill in the, the dictionary below with the info on the label and try printing specific information if you can't find anything nearby, try using this example. I'm just going to go ahead and use this example anyways. And so, okay, so here we go. So we have nutrition facts. And so what we can see here is we have like total fat, saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, sodium, and they all have these different values in it. So this would be a perfect candidate for using a dictionary because then if we want to look up, let's say, for example, we have a food, um, a food 
information website and we want to be able to look up like, hey, what's the amount of carbohydrates in um, in popcorn, for example. If you're, if you're type 1 diabetic, you need that to know how much insulin to give yourself. So um, then we could just have something that automatically looks up just the carbohydrates and we're good to go. So I'm just going to do a couple of these. You can do the whole thing if you really want to. I'm just going to do carbohydrates, sodium, and cholesterol just because those are kind of the, the shorter ones. Uh, and so what I'll do here is I'm just going to open this up on my second monitor and then just type these out as we go. So we have the nutrition facts right here from the label. And so we'll just do, uh, instead of typing total, I'm just going to do, I'm just going to type whatever it's called. So we'll say fat and we'll just say eight. So we'll do this as an int. Um, also, if you really wanted to, you could do this as a string and you could say eight G. Both of these are our options. Um, they're basically up to the developer to decide which one makes more sense, depending on what you need. Um, we can then have sodium, which is going to be five. Actually, you know what? We're going to do the string version because it actually makes more sense because some of these are in milligrams and some of them are in grams. So I'm just going to do this as a string. So now we have fat, sodium, and let's just do carbohydrates as well. Everybody's favorite. Carbohydrates. And we'll say 22 grams. Perfect. So now we have our nutrition facts set up. It says print all the nutrition fact values, which it will. Uh, this will also throw an error, and I'll explain why in a second. Um, but you'll see when we hit, when we do that print for all the nutrition fact values, we'll see this right here. So it says fat, 8 grams, sodium, 5 milligrams, carbohydrates, 22 grams. And here it says that we've run into a key error. And so this is what happens in a dictionary if you try to ask it for something that doesn't exist. So it says it happened on line 42. And so we see it says nutrition facts of value. And we see value doesn't exist. And we go back to our dictionary and we see, oh, yeah. Okay, so value doesn't exist in here as, as a string. But what we can actually change this to is uh, let's change it to fat, for example. And now we're good. Now we know that the fat is 8 grams in here. Uh, and the same thing for sodium and carbohydrates. Basically, we can just, I'll show you this really quickly. You just take sodium. And now you see we've got five milligrams and we can do carbohydrates. Oh, oops. There we go. And now we can see 22 grams. So super easy to use dictionaries, uh, really helpful. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess, so there's, there's the exercise done. So we'll go ahead and comment that one out now. Uh, I'm actually just gonna delete these because I don't need them anymore. So we'll go on to exercise three. Uh, remember there are solutions for these available down below so you don't have to worry about trying to copy my code, trying to quickly frantically type it down. Um, just focus on the information as opposed to trying to write down the specific code for right now. So exercise three, okay. So Python has a function built in to allow you to take input from the command line and store it. This function is called input it takes one argument, which basically means that you just, you give it one piece of data, uh, which is the string to display when asking the user for inputs. So for, you can see there's an example here where it says, uh, you know, you type name is equal to input of what's your name. And then after that, you can type print name. So I'll show you what this looks like. Um, using the information about typecasting, take the input from the command line, which is always gonna be a string, convert it to an int, double it and print it. All right, perfect. Okay, so this seems pretty pretty easy. Uh, actually, it looks like it's already been completed for us. So as you can see here, we have the age with input. And so as you can see with variables, something that's super helpful here, you can actually assign them to a function. And so some functions will give you back information um, that, that you can then use as a variable. So in this case, now, if we go ahead and run this, you'll see it says, what's your age? So if I say, 25, right? Then we get 25, 25. So, oh, it looks like something's actually not been done for us. Um, and so what it gave back was the string 25. And actually, this is kind of something weird about Python, but if you multiply a string in Python, what it actually does is it just repeats that string that many times. So in this case, we said multiply it by two. And so we're actually getting 
two sets of the string 25. And so if you remember from before, we have that int function. And so that int function will actually allow us to take this output and turn it into an integer. So there's a couple ways to do this. I'll show you the longer way first. So first, let's say we take the age that's currently there. And let's say we just do age is equal to the int version of the age. And so now if we do this again, say 25, we get 50. And the reason is right here, because age already has been assigned here, so when we typed in 25, it becomes the string 25. We can then say that age is equal to the int version of itself. And so that means that now at this point, uh, the age is the int 25. And at this point, age is the int, uh, uh, is the string 25 as opposed to int. So now we know by doing this that we've now turned this value from a string to an int, which means that when it gets multiplied by two at the end here, we'll see now it's 50. So just take a second to look through that, make sure the, that all of that makes sense to you. Uh, basically, as you, as you can see in here, if somebody provides 21, it just basically is doubling it from there. Um, and if any of that didn't make any sense, then be sure to ask and ask questions in the comments down below. There is also a faster way of doing this. Um, Python basically does everything from the inner to the outer. And so we can actually do this all in one step by just having int on the outside. Because first, it'll run the inner portion here, which will be getting the information from the user of the command line. And then it will run int and then it will assign itself to the age value. So this will also do the same thing. And so you can enter anything in here and it will, it'll do it automatically for you now. Um, this is the great thing about programming is that once you've written something properly one way, you can do it for all the given values of something. So super helpful to know this is gonna be used heavily in the course. So make sure that you understand how this works. Okay, so uh, let's grab the page here and let's go ahead and we'll grab the challenges. Looks like there's two challenges here. And so, let's take a look at what we have. So under the hood, Python strings are actually collections that use indices. So Python strings actually work exactly the same way that lists do under the hood. Um, knowing this, you can figure, try and figure out how to print the fourth character of the string below. So uh, if we imagine that these, these strings are simply just a list, um, as we've seen before, how would we go ahead and print the fourth value? Uh, well, all we have to do is get the fourth indice. So in this case, so the fourth value is going to be is going to be the n, which is what we're looking for here. And so if we wanted to print that out, then all we need to do is just the same way that we print out the fourth uh, element in a list, we just say that. So now we get n. Super exciting. Um, it may not seem like this is super helpful yet, but later on when we deal with um, stuff about how to get different values from loops, you'll see that this is a really important information that's super helpful for being able to validate content inside of a uh, inside of a string. So like for example, if you wanted to check that something is capitalized, you could always just check the zero zeroth element and you'll see that, oh, it, and now you just have to check for if it's a capital letter or not, right? And so if you just wanted to get one letter to do that with, this becomes super useful for doing that sort of stuff later on. And I'll actually give you some examples of where this becomes useful um, information to know about. Not a lot of people know about this, so um, just keep this in mind. Okay, uh, same thing. So we can go ahead and uncomment these. Create an empty list. Oh, whoops. Sorry, that was a comment. Uh, create an empty list called shopping list. Then using user input, fill the list with five elements. Hint, you can do this with six variables, including the list. Okay. Um, one part that I did skip over when we were doing, when we were uh, going through this is there is actually a way to add values to 
a list. Um, so here it says you can use list.append method to add elements to an existing list. So you can see in this case, if you give it list.append 10, then you can add 10 to the end of this list. So now that we know that, which uh, that's my bad, I skipped over that by accident. Um, what we can do is, well, we need to get, first of all, we need to get values from the user. So we need five values. So let's go with item one equal to input, enter item one, right? And so now when we go to the command line to run this, we can type in like eggs, for example, um, and nothing is, nothing's happened yet, um, which is fine. So now we have this first item that we've taken from the user. And so now we can do shopping list dot append, as we saw in the uh, information that was written down there. We can say shopping list dot append, oh, oops, sorry. There we go. Third time to show. Shopping list dot append item one. So add item one to the shopping list. Get item one from the command line. Okay, perfect. So now we have some comments, so we actually know what's what's what and what's happening. Um, so we know that this is going to get the first item from the command line, and then this is going to append the item to the shopping list. So now let's try this again. So we'll say X, and there we go. So now at the end of this, when it's printing the shopping list, we can see that we now have one item called X. So now we just need to go ahead and do that five more times. So five, uh, so two, two, three, three, four, Five. Oh, we have to fix these two. So enter item five, four, three, two. And I'm just going to do something fancy here where I'm just going to change these lines really quickly. Just update the comments. Uh, okay. So now we have get item one from the command line, add it to the shopping list, get item two from the command line, add it to the shopping list, three, four, five. Perfect, so let's actually see if this works. So we'll just say eggs, ham, turkey, bacon, sausage. And there we go, we got five items and we can change them around as much as we want. Um, I don't know, oranges. Mangoes, pineapples. How do you spell uh, guava? Guava, guava, guava. There we go. And pomegranates. I think that last one spelled wrong, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, as you can see now, we have a system that not only can we add items to, and then it has a shopping list at the end, but we can actually change those items to whatever the user actually wants. Um, so perfect. So there we go. So that's the that's the end of this lesson. Um, there's going to be plenty of information uh, inside the actual module readings. So I would recommend reading that over. Um, there's also, if you want the solutions to this, there's the option to click, and you can see all of the solutions for this. Uh, they've been written either the same way, or they've maybe been written a little bit differently than the way that I did them live. Um, and so. There you go. Um, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one. The next module is going to be about operators and conditionals. So if you have been enjoying the series so far, then be sure to check out that one. And uh, hopefully I will see you there.